I was, uh, they asked me to do a historical marker. So if you go visit that graveyard, you'll see this great big gigantic piece of stone. And on the top of it, it's like a metal plate and it explains the history of that graveyard. You'll see my name on there at the bottom because I'm the one that wrote, that wrote that. So and if you go in from the Mont uh, Montana Street side, uh, you'll see that big, you know, it looks like a, a podium where somebody will come in. That's what it looks like, a podium. And you just read it and I'll tell you some more or give you some more information about, about that particular graveyard. Um, one of the person that, uh, one of the people that I find the most interesting that's buried there was a guy named Lafayette Walker. During the area of, uh, era of San Antonio's uh, segregated area, these grounds became designated as the burial place for persons of African descent. Um, many important historical figures are interned at this location, including Lafayette Walker. So now you know who Lafayette Walker is. He's buried here. Um, a leader during Reconstruction that opposed the Negro agent. That's what Newcomb was called at the time, the Negro agent, um, in seeking rights for African Americans. Uh, names and accomplishments, Ella Austin established a home for black orphans. Y'all saw her picture at the restaurant. Um, Bishop Abram Grant, it's a grave right over there behind you. We'll go walk over there. Um, lobbied for segregated schools. He's an African-American Episcopal bishop, um, but he, he was an adherent to the Booker T. Washington School of Thought. And matter of fact, he was very close friends with Booker T. Washington, uh, and he's buried uh, over there. Um, and of course, their philosophy was, you know, blacks ought to not learn academics, blacks ought to learn how to sew and cook and that kind of stuff. So that was the bad part about segregation. Um, also, um, uh, Harold Tarver, the second vice president of the NAACP and principal of the Dunbar School, which is an all-black elementary school, uh, is also uh, buried here um, and was an opponent of uh, Bishop Grant. Lynn Usan, if you look in your packet, you see that beautiful lady with the big afro. She's buried here, and um, she was San. Well, she in, she was from San Antonio. Her whole family's plot is over there, uh, but she was um, the Houston University of Houston's first black homecoming queen. She was killed uh, in Houston, murdered, uh, and she was a very radical uh, person that fought for uh, African American uh, rights uh, and was killed. She had the most beautiful afro you ever want to see. And I do have, I did give you all a picture of her, so you have a picture of, of Lynn Usain. Um, she's buried over here. Um, first black homing, coming queen, University of Houston. And then leaders of the 1904 streetcar boycott, Jesse Bumbery, O.J. Carter, and William L. Hagwood, uh, editor of the San Antonio Inquirer, indicted by the FBI. In those days, it was the Bureau of Investigation. Uh, they indicted him uh, for allowing articles to be published criticizing the treatment of black soldiers that rebelled against white supremacy in the Houston riot and were subsequently hanged at uh, Fort Sam Houston. Uh, those of you from San Antonio um, probably may need to make note of this. This is the man. This, this, this be the man. He fought in the, either the 9th or 10th Black Cavalry in Tennessee. Comes to San Antonio. He makes a deal with, with uh, Newcomb. You already saw Newcomb's grave. This gravesite, only blacks were buried here because blacks couldn't be buried in the white graveyard. But look at the difference in the material of the stone. It's just simple, cheap concrete, whereas you've got the, uh, and the white cemetery is very high gloss granite, or in some cases, high gloss marble. But being African American, oftentimes uh, they couldn't afford that, especially during this time frame. And so this is the best that they could do. Uh, and this is Lafayette uh, Walker's grave here. Um, he was the, the leader. He's the one who organized all of the East Side um, from 1867 until the time he died in 1902. Uh, this is the grave of Ella Austin, the lady I showed you that started the first black orphanage picture, very famous uh, person in San Antonio, and now it's an Ella Austin Community Center on Pine Street. Um, it's still there, and um, she did a fantastic job with taking young black children who had no mother and no father and put it in, and bringing them to an orphanage and helping them uh, make it in life. So she was the, the first black orphanage in the city of San Antonio back in 1897. Uh, she organized it, and it stayed in existence all the way up until the 1960s. So um, that's how, how long uh, it was there. Now she died, of course. Um, 
Uh, look how old, that, how long ago that was. Um, and, uh, but her legacy lived on uh, with that orphanage continuing in operation years after she had pa passed on. She wrote for the Houston Post. She, she wrote for the Houston Post, for the Black Newspaper of Houston. Or it might have been the, I'm sorry, Forward Times. She wrote for the Houston Forward Times, which was Forward, Forward Times, which was the uh, Black uh, Newspaper of Houston. And um, very active in organizing the community, very uh, active in organizing the uh, Black community of Houston and fighting for civil and human rights and uh, did, a, and, uh, did a really wonderful job. Uh, she was one of the people involved in the movement um, for change and uh, of course her life was snuffed out very early.